Recording. Okay, so I'm going to ask this question for you. Every soul that's born does something as soon as it begins to leave. Y'all know what that is? Every soul, every soul that is birthed in the earth does something as soon as it starts living. That, that's one thing. Yeah, it, it grows a lot of different directions. It says it grows. Anybody want to talk? Thanks. Yes. Huh? As soon as it starts to live, it yes. also starts to die. It's also weird. That, that's that's the good question that it wants to look for, but that's that it also starts doing it too. But 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 there's a fundamental principle that God gave man, woman, boy, and child. And that fundamental thing is it starts to get wisdom. Soon as that baby born, it, the, one of the first things it learned is how to get you to stick that bottle in his mouth. How to get you to change that doubt. So soon as that baby begins to intersect, in, interact with it begins to get gather wisdom on how to get your attention. So that, that, that word was dropped in my spirit at about 2 o'clock this morning wisdom. The question would be, though, when you have the wisdom on how to be prejudiced, what does that help you be? When you have wisdom to get stuck, what does that help you be? When you have the wisdom how to be abusive, what does that help you be? You see, there's innumerable kinds of wisdom. And we're going to discuss what wisdom actually is. But there's a particular kind of wisdom that we gather in here to have. That is the highest quality of understanding so that you can have the capacity to meet the expectations of the one that created you so you can carry it out. 
The thing about it is, you can only gather wisdom from God according to this book of wisdom. Now, in the Bible, it says a couple of things, and I'm going to shoot it out there at you. It says that man cannot live a bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then it says, if you get wisdom, she will uphold you. Yeah. And it also says, if you understand, he says, if you will put your priorities of your wisdom in the right place, you will seek him first. And he adds to you the thing. That you need. But if your wisdom don't work, you will begin to think to yourself, and you can go to Genesis 3, go this book and hit it. You will begin to think to yourself, well, I ain't got to do all that. Well, that's all right. That's the way you want to go. I, I got to endure it. I got to continue. I got to run on through these pages right here. Because this is what tells me how to get the best results out of that zero to 70 years that he's going to give me in time that I can get a bridge into eternity. If you notice in Genesis 3, you notice something. It's dealing with a character named the serpent. But we want to back up because we're talking about this we want to back up and see what the wisdom from God sees. And we want to roll from there. Because I want to show you something. I want you to get an understanding of something. Wisdom and principle thing. Everybody sitting in here got some kind of wisdom. You got wisdom how to drive your car. You got wisdom how to get money. You got wisdom how to buy things. You got wisdom to feed yourself when you, when you get hungry. You got a whole lot of wisdom. But our wisdom won't work for every purpose. So now in Genesis, the second chapter, you find that God has formed a man and he has become a living soul and God has placed him in a garden, which is his habitation. And he has told the man, he says, every tree in this garden you may eat food. Then he goes on down there to say, but, stipulation, there's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat of the knowledge of good and evil because when you do, you will surely die. Is that what he said? Is that what he said? So he was given the wisdom. Here's what you can do. Restrictions. Here's what you can't do. So therefore, when they gather the understanding of the one that put him in the garden, when they gather the understanding that he should have been the one that was right, and should have been the one that could tell them and educate them on what was not good for them, then they should have listened to him. Because so far in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, I ain't seen Satan nowhere. He didn't even come on the scene to Genesis 3. Now here's on something, something going to be real profound to you, and, and you're going to jump all over it when I mention it. But when you get to Genesis 3, it says the serpent was most subtle than most creatures of the people. And he begins to talk to the woman, and he asks the woman, he says, Yea, has God said. Okay, that's good. That's good. And she began to try to tell him what God had said. So she began to debate with him, but the part that I want you to look at is when when Satan says, Satan tells her, oh, you should not surely die. And then he goes on for us to tell her, he knows that when you eat of this knowledge, you will be like God's with a little teeth. So that means he was actually telling her, walk with me now, walk with me now, I need for you to get this. He was actually telling her that if you will get the understanding I'm giving you, you can rise above the God that made you, and you can make your desires and make yourself a God to yourself. By listening to what I got to tell you. 
Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me clean that up. Two thirds of what's wrong with America and the rest of the world is that we can't seem to get away from that joker called Satan. Satan ain't causing a whole lot of stuff. Right, right. That wisdom that you make up your mind that you know that you can do and you can act out is really what's robbing you of being what Christ said you could be. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yeah, we ready. So what happens is Satan continues to talk to your flesh and have you going after things and priority tied in other things with your wisdom of your mind and your want. And instead of wanting to seek God first, you decide that I'm going to seek. So you make yourself and your self appetite and your self desires. You make yourself your own God because it's all right when I do it. Ooh, get ready. Get yeah. So now, what happens when Satan tells you, oh, you ain't going to die? He's going to give you grace and mercy. That is right. But every time God calls, he ought not to be to the bottom of the totem pole in what you're going to do and how you're going to act. Because that breath to suck in for you to go do and handle your business comes from him. You hear what I said? So now, therefore, it says in Matthew, seek him first. And he'll add everything to you. Jeremiah 29 says, if you seek him with all your heart, you shall find him. You know, that's outdated right there. I might have just pushed that to the side, seeking God with all your heart. Who going to do that? You know I got to get me. So Paul went to the excess revelation to tell you that in perilous times, you were going to fall in love with yourself and become a God to yourself. Everything you want to do when you want to do it is what you're going to do. And God going to be the last one. It ain't going to work that way. So therefore, we need to go to the Bible and get an understanding that wisdom is knowledge in the capacity to make use of it. Judgment. Wisdom is knowledge in the capacity to make use of it. Let me say it one more time for the Holy Spirit. Wisdom is knowledge in the capacity to make use of wisdom. So she'll hold you up. Let's just say I'm talking about the wisdom of this Bible. She'll hold you up. She'll keep you. She'll commit to you. She'll love you. She'll produce in you. She'll give you power. She'll, she'll show you the mind of Christ and have you operating in Christ-like manner. It will reveal a manifestation of Christ in you because this does not lie. Now what happened is society will promise you one thing and it'll give you another thing. Now, your, 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 our, our people will deceive you by telling you they one thing and there'll be another thing. But I ain't read nothing in this book yet that God said he would or he wouldn't do that he ain't carried out. Read nothing in it yet. So now therefore, a lot of problems that we are having is not because Satan did something. We can't be like uh, 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 Flip Wilson. The devil didn't make you do everything. Uh -uh. That joker you looking at in the mirror, you have made a god out of. And let me explain to you where I'm going. Because I'm going to get wound up here. God actually saved you. How many Christians I got here? God actually said that when he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell me, he said the Holy Spirit moved in and bestowed gifts upon me. Matter of fact, I'm acting out one of the gifts for the edification of the many member body right now because all things work for good for those that love the Lord. So I'm carrying out the gift that moved into me because without the Holy Spirit bestowing it upon me, I couldn't carry it out. So therefore, this wisdom that I have that's divinely supplied, I'm articulating it right now. You ain't giving me this. <laughs> so therefore, I'm in church carrying out my gift through the wisdom of what God gave me. Nothing of my own. God gave it to me. So therefore, when I look at your wisdom and you slide up to me and said, I made me a possum pie, and then you're going to say, Pastor, if I were you, I don't want your wisdom. You eat possum. You're going to get me in a minute. You're going to get me in a minute. You're going to get me in a minute. What I'm trying to say is, when your gift in you has put upon 
divine supply allows you to know what God has done for you. And it wants you to give a manifestation of who God is coming from you. Amen. So when I look at your wisdom, first thing I need to understand is when I'm looking at you and you looking at me, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm cheap. Because I'm looking slam through you. And you might say, Pastor, if I, and I say, no more. And I might not say no more. Because the real deal is, what you forget, you looking at trash. But I'm actually handling an assignment for him right now. So I'm going to take you to that word in a minute, and I'm going to show you some stuff. See, because whatever kind of wisdom you got, if you have learned everything about your job, if you always on time for your job, and every time it comes to God, you always late. He ain't first in your life. So I got to know wisdom that I put him first, even though I'm slow with people. I put God first in the spirit with me. So the deal is, when we went to Genesis the third chapter four and five, he said ye shall not be as he said ye shall be as God in five. He said you should be as God in five. Listen to this. He said you should be as God in five. Now Second Timothy three one said in the last days, in the last days. Second Timothy three one said in the last days you gonna fall in love with yourself. What happens when you fall in love with yourself? The Bible calls it self ishness. When you fall in love with yourself and God has called you to do this, rescued you by the blood, gave you one of the greatest privileges that mankind would ever have because there ain't nothing coming after the cross. There ain't nothing coming to rescue no man and no woman after the cross. If you don't accept the cross, you won't miss it. Amen. And he made it easy. Because he said, you ain't got to be perfect. My grace is sufficient. But he did say, don't squander so great of an opportunity. See, because here's the deal. The word of God is so powerful that you get it from him. This word in here. When you take it upon yourself and get the understanding of it, it'll set you free. You see, because that word, this is the only word I know, Dwight, that'll enter in through your ear gate and go in there and just bust up with power Amen. and transform you by the renewing of your mind to where it'll give you new understanding, give you new wisdom, pull you up on a new level, have you thinking things you never thought before, Amen. have you been something you ain't never been before, Amen. it'll do something with that old you, it'll bring you into being a new you, Amen. this father right here, it's got power, it don't come by, Amen. just word on that, Amen. and you say, how can I change, <laughs> wisdom, the night, With power to act upon. You might not get it out. But watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Buddy. Wisdom alone tells me this. Wisdom said, Travis, confess with your mouth. Romans 10 9. Confess with your mouth. And believe with your heart, son. I said, Lord, what would that do for me? He said, confess my son. Will show me you believe on it. Because you ain't never seen him. But you're going through the process of confessing him. And I said, well, okay, I, I believe, Lord, in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. He said, okay, pick up your death certificate. He said, because I just, through wisdom, destroyed old Travis. And what you have now taken on is a burden into the body. So I'm giving you a birth certificate because heaven sees you now as something called a new convert. See, all I had to do was just believe what he's saying. And he already wrote my name down. 
to have a birth certificate and already get away with that old me. All I had to do was get the wisdom and follow the direction. And once I followed the directions, the power of me believing the directions entered in through my ear gate, went in on the inside of my body, and began to transform me, began to renew the way I think. I said to myself, I am I worthy of it? He said, you might as well be because I already done away with that old one. Yes. You can already start to think new if you want to. And if you have trouble, just keep hearing. Because if you yes. keep hearing, yes. faith comes by hearing. If you keep yes. hearing, faith comes by hearing. Yes. If you keep hearing, yes. faith comes by hearing. Sooner or later, you're hearing. Yes. It's going to build your faith. Yes, man. Even when he starts showing up and showing out when ain't nobody there but you. <laughs> you say to yourself, I couldn't have done it. I don't know how it got done. Yes. But it got done. Yes. When he starts showing up like that, yes. that's when you know the power yes. of this word is working. Amen. Not gonna, can I ask y'all a question? I need y'all here. But we're gonna be talking. Uh, <laughs> how many times did he speak to the star? He said when he came, the earth was dark and void, and water was covering the earth. Yes. How many times did he speak to the water before it got up? <laughs> Started backing up. Okay. Right. Mm. And the foundation of the earth rose up yes. to separate land from water. Yes. How many times? Did he have to say, in God's sake? And he's going to enter into my, he's speaking to the earth, and he's going to enter into 53 cents worth of dirt, and that powerful God said, can't change me? It won't change you if you reject it. Now, listen to this. There's a statement being made in the Bible. I think it's Hosea 4 6. What did he say? What did Hosea 4 6 say? What did he say? Now, I'm still holding. Because in, in through this Bible, my footsteps have been directed. Through this Bible, the footsteps of a righteous man and a righteous woman have been ordered by the Lord through this Bible. The thing about it is, when you start trying to put the whole Bible together, when you start trying to fit the whole Bible together, the whole Bible was not written to the Gentiles. Only Paul's writing the book. And then John the Revelator. So therefore, when you're trying to read the whole Bible, you better rightly divide it. Because number one is, you can't put yourself in with Israel because you're not a Jew. That's right. You are a Gentile. Yes. God handpicked, Jesus handpicked an apostle and sent him to you. His name is Paul. And when he sent Paul to you, he said in the Acts, the ninth chapter, he said, I, I, he's a chosen vessel unto me, go to the Gentile. So now you're in the Gentile area, and when Paul begins to define who you are and who he is, the first thing Paul told you was, you got a heavenly calling. Is that wisdom? That identified me. Because I was a dog. Because I was a part of the covenant that God had through Jesus with Israel. I was a part of the covenant that God had through Paul with the Gentiles. So what God had through Israel was supposed to be a king in a kingdom. What God had through Paul to explain to me was I was a many member body with Christ being the head. What God told me in Matthew, he said the kingdom repent and be baptized. There's a kingdom at hand. But they killed the servant that brought that message. And then they hung the other one that he crucified, that he baptized in the Jordan River. They hung him on the cross. So therefore, the king was never crowned, and the kingdom never was established. But when the king was never crowned, and the kingdom was never established, God said, let me take everything and transfer it over to Paul, and let me give it to the Gentiles. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. So you were a Gentile, and you was made for the evil day, Ephesians 6. You were made to put on armor. And you were made with a heavenly calling. So God told you, I chose you. You did not choose me. And I chose you according to grace. He said, I chose you according to grace. That's right. 
and you got every other wisdom, you trying to learn every other wisdom but what the one God sent to you. And that is you a mini member body with a heavenly calling, holy and blameless before the Lord, and that if you believe in Jesus, the life of Jesus is accounted to you, just like sin from the first Adam was accounted to you. No, you with me? So now, therefore, you ought not to be letting everybody preach to you and about your identity, because your identity, your wisdom, yes. your understanding is coming from Paul. Yes. Because you're a Gentile. So now, here's what we got to say. The Bible is a book of fact. The whole Bible is Holy Scripture, but the whole Bible is not written to the Gentiles. That wisdom? Is that wisdom? Yes. I thought it was. Okay, so here we are. We have this heavenly country. We are under the dispensation of the Gentiles till they be filled up. So God said in the fourth dispensation, he said, Paul, you go tell Peter them and the other eleven that they got to give it to the Gentiles. Because see, Peter them wouldn't even sit with the Gentiles. They were just sitting teaching the Jews. Paul walks up who God had chosen after Jesus was resurrected. Paul walks up and says, Peter, y'all come in. I've got to tell you something in the Acts of the Apostle. He said, come here, let me tell you something. He said, we got to give this thing to the Gentiles. Yes. I'm in the road. I'm in the go. I'm just rehatching. So faith comes by hearing. I need for you to know who you are. See, because here's the deal. He didn't give you no Ten Commandments on no rocks. He said, I'm going to write them in your heart. Yes. He said, because you got a heavenly call. Yes. Huh? And so he wrote it in your heart, and here's what he asked you. He said, don't worry about the ten. He says, if you can love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength, if you can love your neighbor as yourself, then you can need all of them. Yes. On that. Yes. That what he said? Then he told you, he said, I don't care if you got all wisdom, if you know all mystery. He said, I don't care if you speak with all tongues, if you have not love. Amen. So my wisdom says I need to believe what he said about me. So what did he say? He said, I chose you, you didn't choose me. Ephesians 1, 2, 3, Four. He said, I predestined you, placed you in Jesus in heavenly places, gave you every spiritual blessing. How did, can somebody tell me what Ephesians 1 4 says? Because when them churches and them preachers stand up and tell you you're born to hell, God said, I chose and put you in Jesus before the foundation of the world. And here's how I see you I see you holy and blameless. Who, who going to kick against the prick and, and, and kick against God's word? That's God's word. So if that's God's word, that's the highest quality of wisdom that there is in the world. Yes, yes. Who are you going to believe? You're going to be like Eve? Mm -hmm. Are you going to believe God and have life? He wrote it to me. I'm telling you. Now, listen to what he said. I can't use, of course I do know the story about the three little feet. But I can't use that Ephesians 4. The apostle properly banished the pastor to teach it to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry till they all be edified. That there be no more children tossed to and fro. I can't tell you the three little pigs. That's a wisdom, but it's fiction. So it, it won't move your big toe. You need a wisdom that can move you from who you were to who God wants you to be. I'm here to tell you Satan is not your biggest problem because Luke 10, 18, and 19 said you got power over him. I'm here to tell you your biggest problem is yourself. Because if you ever realize who God made you to be, you won't have no problem with Satan. But every time you look in the mirror, self is looking back at you. And you don't know how to use wisdom on self. So you want to blame Satan. But actually, it's your desire yes. that's hindering you from seeking him first. Yes. 
So you were in perilous times. So you done made a little God out of yourself. So you take your desires and put them ahead of everything God wants you to do. And then you say, okay, God, come on. He said his name is Jealous. He said his name is Jealous. If his name is Jealous, how do we put him last when he wakes us up first? that was born and created in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, he was supposed to teach them how to walk with God. And instead of him obeying God, wisdom, he ate the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and made himself and his woman a God. How did they make it a God? Because they rose up above what God said and believe Satan. They, 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 they told them what God told them, you can eat it up. Don't touch that tree of the knowledge. He said, don't touch the knowledge. He said, don't touch the knowledge. How do the church still think they can touch the knowledge of Satan lies and make it through? God has made every avenue listen you don't understand the simplicity of what Christianity is. Christianity is unmerited favor called grace and mercy. And God handpicked you to be in Christ. And you're making a mockery of that by making yourself rule of God. Kind of tight. <laughs> so the wisdom of it is what I'm trying to get you to understand. Knowledge man's room. I can be talking to somebody about the Bible and give them a scripture just as hard as I can talk, just as hard as I can preach, one on one, and you know what they'll write back and say? Well, Pastor Samson, I believe. When they, when they head down that road with Pastor Samson, I believe. Or I feel like. When they head down that road, will I think? I say, oh. I'll reach over here and I'll let you look at this right here. Since when does the creative get the debate with the creator? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anybody, anybody want to answer? Since when does the creative get the debate with the creator? The one that made the universe. 
hung all the stuff. Because you know why he wrote this Bible to you? So you could get the best out of this dirt life you're coming through time with. He gave you wisdom and told you, I'm going to go there and read it to you in a few minutes. I'm going to cross it. <laughs> but he told you what his wisdom would do if you got understanding of it. Huh? Now, now self-wisdom, you your own God by your own desires. That's self-wisdom. That's what Second Timothy talked about. It's when you, when you follow your own desires, do your own thing, and don't worry about what God is saying. Wisdom of self, wisdom of prejudice, wisdom of abuse, wisdom of foolishness, wisdom of things, wisdom of family, wisdom of school, wisdom of society, wisdom, wisdom of desires, all these things. Are wisdoms that you can accomplish, but they don't pay one iota to a ticket out of time into eternity. All those wisdoms does nothing for you. Now, 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 watch this. I'm gonna tell you a lot of what's going on with the church, cause we all being destroyed for lack of knowledge, cause we don't know how to rightly divide the word of God. Hebrews 5, 13, 14. What it say? Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something. Now, while I'm showing you something, I want to get you to understand. When you can't discern what's a good basket of fruit from a bad basket of fruit, but you calling yourself a man of God leader of the church, and you can't even discern what a, a good fruit is from a bad fruit, you're in trouble. So you are considered to be by the Bible a blind guide leading blind people. Uh huh? Uh huh? So now, here's what the Bible told me. The Bible told me that the white, if I look at you, know you by your spirit and know you by your fruit. The spirit of God is humble. It does not boast. It does not live. It humbles itself. The spirit of God is love because love is God's image because God is love. That's why he said without love you are nothing because if you are not showing God's image, you don't have God because God is love. Everything God did was because of love. So Hebrews 5, 13, 14, tell you what. Stop right here. Uh, uh, Veronica, can you, can you got that? Can you read that for me? I appreciate that. Can you read that for me? Listen, I need to be able to hear this. Uh, uh, can you read that for me, Veronica? 513. 513. I need to be able to hear this because I need to show you something. For everyone that they use a milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. The strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Would you read that for me? Watch this. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. See, number one is, every Sunday they stand behind the pulpit, tell you bring the all the tide unto the storehouse so that they may be meat in my house. Did you get the word out of Hebrew? Meat, meat. So if you can't discern how to teach the truth and rightly divide the word of God to give the portion to the sheep, you ain't got no business with your hands on none of God's stuff. Because God just said in Hebrews, he ain't even using you. Because you can't even be sure. Talk to me. Talk to me. Argue with God. Don't argue with me. See, because if he gave you the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, to perfect the saints, which means to mature the saints for the work of their ministry. How are you going to mature the saints to the work of their ministry on the something that is other than the truth and cannot cause deliverance to set nobody free? Amen. Talk to me. Talk to me. Read it first. One more time because we're 
we've been hitting this plane above the ground. For everyone that uses the board, it's unskillful in the world. Start right here. Everybody that use milk, what do you do with that baby when you bring them home? Give them a New York script steak? <laughs> what do you do with it? Huh? Give it milk. But now, you know that if you keep feeding that baby milk, that baby gonna grow. Is that not right? So now, therefore, what he's saying is, he said you might be a baby, but you can wait because you're gonna grow. If you keep that milk and that sincere milk stuck in that baby's mouth and keep him trained, keep him cared for, keep him nurtured, he gonna grow. Amen. And when he get on meat, God said, when he get on meat of the spiritual word of God and the wisdom of God, he said that he then, he then can discern what's right and what's wrong. So now I'm going to talk to you. The statement was made. That a man could be a man of God by defending faith, but not actually living it. <laughs> but the Bible said, the Bible said, here's how you know me. Know me by my spirit. And know me by my fruit. Yes. That's what the Bible said? Yes. Huh? Okay, if the Bible said, know me by my spirit and know me by my fruit. And I'm telling you because that cactus over there is defending God-like things 10% of the time, but it's a liar, it's a gossiper, it's prideful, and I'm going to say they are a man of God or a woman of God, and their fruit is prone rotten, my discernment is out. Yeah. Well, this is what has happened in America. Man became such a lover of man instead of loving God so that God can continue to produce and renew their mind that they'll believe in anything man said. So all I got to do is go out there and shout, hey, that's a man of God right there. They say, you hear what Pastor said? That, come, that oak tree standing up there is a man of God. It'll spread like wildfire called man said it, and they want to latch on to what man said. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, I know that. 
Now, being he died on the cross, what does he expect of me to receive what he did on the cross? He said, what? Oh, oh, oh. So he said to believe. So if I, if I show, being I ain't never seen any white, if I sit down and open up a Bible and the subject is Jesus, but I ain't never seen him, and I keep reading that subject about Jesus and I ain't never seen him, you know what heaven looks at your heart and sees? He ain't never seen him, but he picks up that Bible. He got the... That alone will let him in. Because he is the word, and he's just not a word without power. He can transform you to the renewing of your mind. Let him in. So here we are. We're here in 2019, and the church is suffering from amnesia. Here's what God said, plain and simple. If you don't understand what I said, please speak up. Here's what he said. He said you were crucified with him. He said you were baptized into his death. And if you was baptized into his death, if you were crucified with him, you was baptized into his resurrection. My question would be, when, when was he crucified and resurrected? When, I mean, when was he crucified and resurrected? 2,000 years ago. So now, wait a minute. You. 2,000 years ago. So now, I'm 55. So therefore, 2,000 years ago were before my time. Okay. But God wrote wisdom. Here's what God said. God said, if you accept my son, Romans 10, 9 and 10, Paul said, Paul says, if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Already 2,000 years ago, it was written that when you accepted Jesus, you was in him crucifying the old self, already been nailed to the cross. That's already done. So when he told you you were crucified with him, you ought to be saying, uh. How was I crucified with him? You was in the thought of God. God had already chose you. Because that's why Ephesians 1 said before the foundation of the world, God had already chose you. God had already wrote your name in that book. Amen. And so therefore, he put you in Christ. So when Christ went to the cross, you was on board. So no wonder you ought to claim your healing. See, because, but don't get it wrong, the highest quality of healing is a bridge to step out of time over into eternity because, see, time is temporary. It ain't everlasting. So that, that 2,000 years ago, if you accept Christ in 2019, immediately, there are some things that happen immediately. The blood comes, the spirit enters, you received the spirit of adoption, and that oh, you was written off as being crucified. You was baptized into the resurrection. You got a birth certificate of being born again. Tell me I'm lying. I'm waiting. That's the Bible. So if that be the Bible, how can you look at yourself and every time I see you, you go proclaim, well, I'm struggling, pal. The devil is giving me hell. No, you give yourself hell. Because you ain't got no wisdom to go along with that statement you just made. See, because that statement said that your creator God put you in his crucifixion. Your creator God put you in his resurrection. How you gonna look at yourself being old Adam, old Adam, and that new Adam don't credit life to you? Because you got nobody. Woo! Uh, how you gonna look at yourself and sin and death be contaminated and God is gonna credit it new life to you? Yeah. Yes. Hear what Paul said. Hear what Paul said. Paul said that that I should do, I cannot do. He said, Lord, I've been praying to you. Satan is buffering me. He said, Satan, he said, Satan. It's buffering me. And I've been praying to you. God said, Paul. Paul. 
My grace, my grace, Paul, is sufficient for you. You keep doing what I told you to do. When I want to handle that prayer, <laughs> we making it hard because we've been taught all down through the lives you're going to hell. God didn't tell you that. God said, I sent my son Jesus not to condemn you. I sent him to save you. Somebody argue with the Bible. So now, you got a heavenly calling. You got grace and mercy. You've been placed in Jesus before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless. That is the wisdom of the Bible. Now, what happens is, in 2 Timothy 3 4, he said, in the end time, they're going to be perilous times. Well, you're going to make a God of yourself, and you want to do what you want to do when you want to do it. So, therefore, God is going to be second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh in your life. He ain't going to be first. How's that going to work? Let me tell you what I got to do. In the morning when my eyes open, I don't need to move out of the bed. Tell me where it tells you in the Bible that I need to get down on my knees to pray to God. Huh? Tell me in the Bible where it said I need to run around this building to run into healing. Tell me where it says in the Bible where and how I ought to pray. He said, when you pray. Huh? So when I open my eyes in the morning, the first thing I do before I move, I pray. That gives him the beginning of that day. And when the mark comes, I'm going to do the same thing. You know why? I cannot afford to put him behind what I'm going to do. Watch this. Expectation. Tell me what Matthew 6 <coughs> said. Expectation. Matthew 6 33. Let me tell y'all how messed up I am. Say what I'm supposed to say. 
Mike, you stand. I'm kind of weird today. Oh, me, Michelle. Listen to this. Now, y'all know we are one nation under God. In God we trust, right? Y'all know our churches sends missionaries all over the world, right? They go feed the hungry, give water wells, all kinds of stuff. Missionaries going on from every denomination just about. Okay. My, my, my question would be this. Should God's love work overseas and not work in America? Huh? Okay, then y'all, okay, y'all, y'all help me. I need for y'all to talk to me now, because I'm a little slow. Watch this right here. What if I were to go to Guatemala and show love to their children? And I had some poor children. And I come back home and the poor children came to my nation. And the love of God that I showed to them children in Guatemala. Can I cut the love off in America because they came to my gates? And just take them children and put them in cages. Yeah. Is the love of does the love of God does the work love of, does the love of God work like that? Somebody tell me, please. No, it don't. Yeah. It don't. If the love of God don't work like that, then why we got so many Christians saying they ain't got no business over here when the Bible said the earth is the Lord's? Yes. Come on. I ain't never seen so many Christians that have gotten hung up. In selfishness and make they self a God and other people God by believing what they want to believe and don't go by the wisdom of the Bible. Amen. How you gonna go love somebody's children in their nation and when they come to your nation, your nation too good for them? Amen. No, that ain't love. No, that ain't love. You ain't understanding God's kind of love because God's kind of love will work everywhere. Amen. Amen. Here's what he said. He said, the gates will, the poor will come to your gates and never close your gates unto the poor. That's, right. That's what he said. Amen. That's the word. I read it. Huh. So now let me tell you what God kind of love did for me. When I showed him that I was interested, I was messed up, the wife. But that didn't keep his love. <laughs> and that didn't keep where I was standing at. Right. Because I was in Maryland when he found me. He did not keep Say, you in Maryland, you got to come to North Carolina. He didn't say that. He said, right where you at? I'm coming to, I'm coming to rescue you. I don't know where you was, but I went with you when you got rescued. But wherever you was, he didn't look at you and say, no, nah, I can't get you right there. You're going to have to move down there to the building. He didn't say that. He said, if you were lying in your bed. I'll come right there. He said, if you're in hell, I'll come right there. He said, no matter where you at. I'll come. Yes. I'll come. So we got it messed up. So then, then, then we go on down. And we look at Matthew 4 4. It is written. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Why should we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> To be equipped by knowledge, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. To be equipped because the Holy Scriptures give you the equipment, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. It equips you to reprove, to correct, to be instructed for righteousness, that you may be equipped to do all righteous works. Huh? Is that what it said? Yeah. Now, the reason why wisdom is important to me, because in here, Second Peter 1 3, you might want to go on over there. Second Peter 1 3, because in the Word, in the Holy Scriptures, in that Word that you're supposed to live by, in that Word that you're supposed to seek, which is God and His Son Jesus, in that Word is the knowledge to supply you with not only the cares of life, but the cares of godliness. Is that what Second Timothy 1 3, Second Peter 1 3 say? You know what he said? Ain't that what he said? If it ain't what he said, probably like that. <laughs> Let's see what he's talking about. What you got? You know what he said? Okay. So, all things pertaining to life and godliness comes through knowledge. 
Not at your hoop. Will you repeat? Good, but, but not at your hoop. Huh? You see why? God said, get wisdom and understanding and she will uphold you because your knowledge of him seals you with your benefits. Huh? Huh? Yeah, so now you see there, you ain't got nothing in your hand, and you got the power through the wisdom and knowledge of God to speak things because you ain't got nothing in your hand. You can speak something in your hand because you got a created word in your mouth. Huh? That shows faith, don't it? So you got a created word in your mouth. So you ain't got to look at what you're standing in. You can speak where you can go. So see, you might be standing back here five steps away from what you need. But you ain't standing in what you need. So you can open your mouth and speak those things that are not. And though they are, and step into your future. Amen. So now, we are celebrating Christmas. What we are celebrating is to be imitated. If we want to celebrate and give him honor, let's imitate what we celebrate. The reason for the season is Emmanuel. Amen. Oh, you, uh, you know why I said it like that? <laughs> Anybody want to tell me? Because Emmanuel is God with us. Huh? Yes. Huh? They call me Manuel. He's with us. Yes. Huh? He, he said, I'll never leave you. Oh, yes. Not for sure. Uh, huh? Yes. His, his presence makes all the difference. Yes. So he said, I'm with you. Oh. Yes. All the time. Yes. That's good, ain't it? Yes. Emmanuel. Yes. So he's with us. So now, there's a situation you find yourself in too. Let me see. If you go out there and step in that mud hole, <laughs> does that change Jesus' relationship because you're in a mud hole? Okay, if you go stand on the church top, does that change your situation with Jesus because you're standing on the church top? If you go out there and climb up in that tree, does that change who Jesus is in your life? Huh? You know what's changing in your life? If your mind is being renewed, you ain't taking on your identity. You want me to tell you why? Well, well, I'm doing pretty good. But I've been catching hell lately. Why? Well, you, listen. You know what you just did when you confessed that to me? You just bought that old man that was crucified on that cross back. And you just said the old Adam is more powerful than the new Adam. Come on, come on. Yes. Can I ask you a question for real? Can I ask you a question? How do you keep accepting the old man, but you have accepted the new man? How do you keep going by bringing him back? And, 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 and the question was asked, if, if death was credited to you by the first Adam, then life was quickened and credited to you by the second Adam. Okay, how can you accept the old Adam all the time and never accept the new one. Who is your salvation? Your everlasting life. Your promises. The fulfillment of God's plan for you. Your rescue. The one the blood that paid, paid for your for your for your salvation. How how you gonna deny it? the new Adam? Because you want me to tell you what? Y'all ain't ready. <laughs> If you really understand what God told Paul, if you were crucified, it's just like the first Adam was put to sleep and Eve was pulled from him. There was a body in Christ on that cross. It was the Gentile believer. It was a mystery from ages and generations past. That body that was pulled from Jesus after Israel rejected Jesus was Jesus king over, he was to be head over. And she was to help him rule and reign because all the power that he was going to bestow upon Israel, he moved it because they rejected him and he put it on that body. So the second Eve, the church, the many member body, working according to the gifts that God sent the Holy Spirit to bestow in her. Church ain't preaching nothing about the first Adam. No, this is the second one. 
So you don't identify yourself with the new Adam because you're too busy. Ain't what it used to be. Remember we went through. You ought to quit telling that lie. You sure ain't what you used to be. Because yeah. God done redid you. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Listen. You owe it to yourself to rightly divide wisdom. You talk about the good news gospel all the time. Can I ask y'all a question? What good news gospel are you talking about? Which one is it? You want me to tell you how many good news gospels there is? There's a good news gospel, the good news gospel of the kingdom. It ain't here yet. The good news gospel of the king, he was crucified. There's a good news gospel of grace, and there's a good news gospel of God. Now let me tell you why you need two of them gospels. You need the gospel of God because it was God's love that came up with the good news to send Jesus. The gospel of grace is due to a heavenly calling <coughs> for the Gentiles because God called them before the foundation of the world, placed them in Jesus with every spiritual blessing to be holy and blameless. They're the workmanship of Jesus Christ. Ordained to do good works. Huh? You ain't hear what said did you? So when you read the gospel, if you want to write the divide something, read the gospel of God and read the gospel of grace because that applies to you. You say, well, what about Jesus? When you read the gospel of God, it's going to tell you the plan of what God planned to send Jesus to you. Now, the gospel of God is working because for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. God did that. Yeah. So it's the gospel of God because he's sharing the good news. And it's the gospel of God. Because he the one gave you Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's the gospel of God. Because you weren't born when he put you in Jesus. Anybody want to talk? You were not born. When he placed your name in the thoughts. And put you on the cross with Jesus. So that when he got up. Hey, yes, sir. You got up with him. Yes sir. Not only did Paul say you were crucified with him, but Paul said you were baptized into his death and you were baptized into his resurrection. How did it feel? How many Christians are there? Let me ask you this question. How did it feel when Jesus got up out of that tomb after they got him off that cross? Oh, yes, sir. And scrolled back through time. Yes, sir. Went back there into the grave. Told everybody in the grave way Satan thought he had. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to give grace to the Gentiles. How many of y'all want it? Oh, right. And they said, yes, if you're going to give grace, give me some of that so I can come up out of here. Yeah. He said, everybody that wants to go with me, he led the captives. He led the captives out. He said, everybody want to come go with me. Come go with me. So if you was in Jesus when he was crucified, hey. you was in him when he walked back in that prison yeah. of that tomb and stood up. And said, everybody that wants to accept grace, what I'm finna give to the Gentile, come go with me. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. Huh? That's the Bible. So he gave grace to the ones that was in the grave. They, they, they died unsaved. And he carried them grace. He said, because if I'm going to give grace to you, I got to give it to them. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know what grace is. We let the pastor tell us we're going to hell. Did God say that? So if my wisdom says I need to believe God and let every man be alive, I need to believe what God said over me. Okay, watch it. What Jesus does is he being forth for our instructions as his body, as a pattern to be imitated. He beams forth for us. See, because his word. Did you know that when the new heaven comes, they said that it don't need no sun there. 
Because it's going to shine from the brightness of Christ. Huh? John 1, 14 did say he the word, ain't he? Yes. So what happens if I let that word go in that ear right there? <laughs> Laying down there in my heart. <laughs> Paul said, it'll be like a light shining from my heart. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You mean to tell me if that word get trapped off in my heart? <laughs> it's got a reflection. It's got a reflection coming from me. Yes. It's called manifestation. Yes. Okay, watch this. We are the enforcers of what God the Father and the Son say. Let me ask y'all a question. Y'all, y'all some pretty wise people in here, right? I want to talk to the Bible scholars. Now, from Moses' time, right on up to Matthew, God is dealing with the Israelites. Huh? Okay. They came a place in there where Israel said, now, Pilate, we want you to kill him. What were they doing then? What were they doing when they asked Pilate to kill the king? Supposed to be king. Jesus. What do you reckon they were doing when they asked Pilate to kill him? They were rejecting him. They were rejecting him. Israel, <coughs> as a whole, was rejecting him. To the point, Israel was still looking for a Messiah. Because all Jesus ever was to them was the carpenter, the son. That's why they got after Pilate when Pilate said, let's put king of the Jews on him. And the chief priest said, no, he ain't our king. Okay, now, y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. Can y'all tell me, after Israel rejected Jesus, who he going to use then? What he going to do? If he hadn't slid it over to another group of people, it would end it there. It would have ended there, wouldn't it? Yes. They rejected him too. They said, we don't want him. If God had not had a better plan to slide it to the Gentiles, so every generation would still have a manifestation of the word Jesus. Yeah. Him coming in the first place would have been in vain. Amen. Now you got the Gentiles don't know who the heck they is because they ain't got no wisdom and understanding that has been given to them. Yeah. Huh? They ain't a kingdom. They are many member body. Jesus, who overcame, says, I think for you, and here's what I think towards you. He said, I overcame the world. I defeated sin and death. I made a public spectacle out of principalities, rulers of darkness, and imps, and you are in me. And everything that I have accomplished, you are more than a conqueror. Y'all yes. <laughs> ain't got it. Yes. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. So I don't care what you see yourself standing in. Here's what he's saying. He said your trials are not meant to destroy you. Your trials are meant to build patience in you. Because you are constantly talking to me. Headquarters will move for you. Wait on me. Yes. Wait on me. Yes. I say on the Lord. Can we get that? Yes. Huh? Y'all gonna beat all your nails, I think. <laughs> Y'all struggling with what flesh said to you. Okay. Let me share that time here. What can dirt do? But think like dirt. Is that right? So now, the curse is in dirt. Curse ain't in the soul. Even though the soul got to be regenerated, the curse is in the dirt. Huh? Okay, now, if the Holy Spirit moves in, it moves in to regenerate the soul. Psalm 23. He restores my soul. Is that not right? So now, here's the deal. If the Bible tells you that dirt, which is flesh, fights against the Spirit of God, Galatians 5. If the Bible tells you that your dirt body 
fights against the Spirit of God. What Satan does is get in the dirt and hang out. You, you, hey, 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 you know you feel me. Hey, 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 you know you feel me. And he'll keep hollering and you'll be saying, and the devil is alive. And he'll be saying, hey, 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 hey. Then he'll pack down a little bit. And just as soon as you think he's gone, that dirt, he'll be standing in that dirt roaming around because that's his habitat, you know. And he'll say, hey, hey, you know you hear me. Oh, Lord. Come on, Don't you feel a little pain? <laughs> and then your mind will say, well, I do feel, I do a little feel, a little something. Then he'll say, he'll change sides in the dirt. Come on. He'll say, hey, you feel it a lot harder now, don't you? And that dirt will agree. Yeah, I feel it right there. Yeah, I feel it right there. But the Bible doesn't say it. That your flesh, which is your dirt, your 53 cent worth of dirt on the outside, is going to fight against what God put on the inside. Yeah. I got enough wisdom to know that I can bring dirt. I'm going to walk on it when I go out of this building. I'm going to walk on it right now. Because dirt ain't going to tell me nothing. I'm going to let Christ kill me because I got his money. That's wisdom. Satan's greatest weapon is to outlast your thinking to persuade you he got more power than God. Because if he can persuade you, he'll become your God and make you make you think you are God. Because you'll begin to doubt what God said. And you'll begin to look at what he said. You know, that's what he did to Eve. Oh, yeah, that's what he did to Eve. He said, Eve, you shall not die. So now, can I ask you a question? What do y'all think lawlessness is? What do y'all think lawlessness is? What do y'all think lawlessness is for real? See, y'all think sin just exists out there. The biggest sinners is in the church. Let me tell you why. The white, if you ever move into a church and the pastor stand behind there, and he's speaking to him four or five times, and he ain't got no interpreter, you need to get up. <laughs> you want me to tell you why I say that? Because God says if you have all tongues, don't speak in tongues without an interpreter. So if you're sitting in the church speaking in tongues, and you ain't got no interpreter, you're not obeying what God said. You're lawless. You're not obeying commands. You're lawless. See, but you ain't got all commands in your mind. But the things you do have, try to accomplish them. And when you can't accomplish them, Father, I ain't got the power. Apply grace. <clears throat> That's all you got to do. Lawless. But you stand. Huh? Lawless. Yeah, now, so, so when you stand, and I'm going to tell you that I'm going to love you. And I'm an under shepherd. But I ain't going to love her. Amen. I can't do that. Uh, he said, I got to love my enemy. Yeah. Now, 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 let me tell you how that happens, though. I ain't got to go down there to the house. Come on. The strongest love I got is to get on my knees. That's right. Tell him all about it. Yes. See, once I tell God all about it, he got the power. Because yes. he said, lay the burdens on the altar yes. and leave them right there. And it was it. Huh? I ain't got to go down there. I might get beat up down there. See, right. well, I, I let him box with God. I let her box with God because I'll go down. When I get down, I'm so sick, you know. Yeah. You know I'm humbling myself, you know. Yes. Yeah, it seems like when I get low, it goes a little higher. <laughs> so now, do you understand that every one of y'all in here got a mind? You use wisdom every day. But I'm here to tell you, the only wisdom you can use to get to heaven is that Bible. If grace is applied to you, use it. Tell God you ain't got, tell him you ain't got the just don't lie to him. I ain't got that, God. I ain't got that. Give it to him. You ready? Uh -huh. uh, That's what I think. Huh? Because you, you want me to tell you something? If you're sharper than me, if you can find what I'm going to ask you, 
The whole Bible is full of misfits. Moses was a misfit. Yes. Noah was a misfit. Yes. Noah loved getting drunk more than anything I ever seen. Yes. When God called Noah, God supplied Noah with his message and what he wanted him to do. Noah didn't have to preach to Pharaoh. He didn't have to preach, let my people go. He didn't have to preach what Adam and Eve said. All Noah had to do was preach what God told him to do and hammer on that thing. And then when he got the building built, he got in there and he got drunk again. <laughs> now what you going to tell God about Noah getting drunk? Huh? Uh -huh. Now, Lord, I saw pastor over in Roseburg. Standing out in the parking lot talking to a woman. <laughs> Jesus was in the house with Mary Martha. What are you going to do with him? <laughs> I want to know what you're going to do with Jesus. He was in the house and one of the women were up. The white head was rubbing on his feet. <laughs> yeah. I was standing straight up. My feet was in my boots. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What you going to do about that? Huh? And then they tell me, oh, you don't look like no preacher because you're preaching cowboy boots. Teacher, can I ask y'all a question? Jesus walked 50 miles in a pair of sandals to cast out a demon. I wonder how Jesus' clothes looked after he walked that 50 miles. It might not have been that that lady wanted to waste that perfume that was in that alabaster box. But Jesus might have just walked that 50 miles and needed that. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What I'm trying to say is you can't make up your mind what somebody look like on the outside. Right. Yeah. We need to get this thing right and understand something. Every Christian sitting in here cannot debate that God gave them his spirit. And his spirit is supposed to lead you I'm going to think it's kind of funny mm. if I see that lady's spirit come in my house mm. and say, I'm, I'm the Holy Spirit that was in Dorothy. I came to lead you to the truth. I'm say, no. I got my own. I'm going say, no, I got my own. You better come back where Dorothy is and leave her. Go ahead. Go ahead. Biblical Christianity. Mm -hmm. That man cannot stand up and put brown people in cages mm -hmm. and plead that Ku Klux Klan's are good people too. Mm -hmm. That man can't stand up with pride and say, if anything gonna get done, I got to do it. Mm -hmm. 
He cannot do things that is against God over and over. And then some of the biggest names in church history is going to stand behind him and say, even though he do diabolical things, he still defends his faith. How do you defend the faith if you're not living by the faith? I want to know. He's got America messed up. And the name of Jesus will pull us together. That many member body got one love, one spirit, one God, one Jesus. That body pulls us together up under one head, and all of us get in there not without envy, not with strife. There's neither Greek nor Jew, there's neither male nor female. We are not looking at each other, we are looking at him. That's right. He's got America messed up the way families can't even sit at the table and bring up his name. Amen. Can't go to the doctor. And bring up that name. There are people literally fighting at the eating table over the division that has come to a nation that was vowed to be under God. He didn't attack Esau, which is Russia. He didn't attack China. He attacked the head of a nation that had in God we trust. And then this one man convinced the whole political party. Follow me as I follow and fall off the bridge. <laughs> and here go America with no sense to hear and no eyes to see right behind. So when I say let's make America great again, America ain't going to be great again. She's going to face some trouble. Mm -hmm. Because God said perilous times were coming. Mm -hmm. God said Jacob's trouble were coming. Mm -hmm. And God said it was coming in the generation of the fig tree. And that started in 1948. So therefore, we are dead smike. 70 years in the midst of the generation of the fig tree. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. We're, we're 70 some years in the generation of the fig tree. So all of God's word is supposed to fulfill in that generation. If you don't have wisdom of that generation, you won't know what you're standing in. I've got wisdom of that generation. My job as the pastor teacher is to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry till they all come to edification. Is that all right? Because I need to teach you till you be no more children. Tossed to and fro with every wind and every doctrine. Is that not right? Okay, so here's what you need to do and get an understanding of it. I'm going to talk to me. I'm going to end it. I'm going to talk to me. Dirt. Dirt. If I got to pull you off. You still ain't gonna stop me. That's right. Because I'm gonna step right on out. That's right. Step around you while somebody get you up. It was good <laughs> using you. I used you 60 something years, 70 something years. Ever how many years I used you? It was good. But I got to go on now. Right. I got to go to a higher Amen. level. Amen. I got to go up on that ring of righteousness. I'm going to look at Lazarus, who was the man when he was in time that laid oh, down yeah. with the dogs. Yes. Eight crumbs from the yes. rich man's gate. Mm -hmm. And them crumbs fell down and the dogs treated him better than the man did. Mm -hmm. But when he stepped around that dirt mm -hmm. and stepped out of time, mm -hmm. rich man stepped out of his dirt, yeah. stepped out of time. So the rich man woke up sweating. So when he looked up, Lazarus was laid under, kicked back his apartment. Yes, yes. <laughs> so he said, hey! <laughs> Luke 16, if you want to read it. Oh, he said, hey! I'm down here. Tell Lazarus to come bring me some water. He said, no. When you had Lazarus been on earth, you didn't treat him right. right. Now you want us to turn him loose? He can't come across the goal. <laughs> he said, well, hey! Let me go tell my brother. Don't come down here. You know what he said? If your brothers won't believe the living, they ain't gonna believe the dead. That's right. That's right. You know why I'm telling you that story? I'm telling you that story because it's real. After Jesus got up out of that tomb, 
ain't nothing laying in that grave out there but dirt. That's right. That's right. So now, when you really look at all, I'm going to give you this and then I'm going to say a prayer. Here's what it is. Here's the basis of what I'm trying to tell you right here. John 8. You ain't got to turn I'm just going to recite it to you. John 8, 32 says, Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. It is the truth that loose you to have the understanding of God. The truth looses you to have the understanding of God. Now, where, where, where am I waiting on God to meet me at? Where I am. Don't try to become me. Huh? My job, I'm doing my job right now. Stay in your position for you. You, you, you know? <laughs> Y'all know that we got a YouTube page. There was a couple of ladies in here saying, you know, this would be good. They didn't say, Pastor. They said, Pastor, we need to do this for you. And boom! <laughs> here go they deal. Mm -hmm. Here go Tommy Hawk Learning Center up with a YouTube page. <laughs> Why? Because God put a gift in somebody that dared to manifest it. Mm -hmm. That's what ministries do. Yes. We don't get jealous of each other. Mm -hmm. We jump up and help each other. Amen. We compliment each other. Why? Because everybody in this building is an assignment in covenant with Tommy Hawking God. Amen. Y'all was assigned here for a while. He added on. And he's still adding on. Y'all ain't seen yet what he gonna do. He just started.